Good morning, folks. Let's look back nine days ago. Major lull in quake activity, but we looked at the coming coronal holes in planetary geometry and called two uptick periods. The first was just two days later when Iran took a couple significant tremors in a 36-hour period, and during that time, the Iceland volcano went on alert as well. They've actually taken the alert level back down to orange, even though larger seismicity prevails in the area. In fact, we've also got alerts issued at Hecla, so that's two volcanoes on watch there. Then, after a few days in between watches, we identified the next coronal holes and that they would arrive on the 24th or 25th of August. Around the same time the new moon was coming, Mars was conjoining Saturn in the evening sky, which is absolutely beautiful if you get a chance to go outside and see it. And also, kind of a double conjunction as Earth sits between opposing bodies of Neptune and Mercury, followed by the opposition of Neptune and the Sun. First, Chile went off 12 hours earlier than expected with a mid-six range rumble. Then, yesterday, California started the enhanced watch period with a six-pointer that caused fires, structural damage, and more than 100 injuries. Then later last night, a magnitude 7 earthquake struck what is thankfully a very low population area of Peru. Let's hope that's all the pressure we need to release. Solar wind is as calm as it comes speed way way below 300 kilometers per second as though our sun was taking low shallow breaths look at how smooth the electron flux has become because of it but there ends the calm an m 5.9 solar flare erupted from a new sunspot region on the southern hemisphere it is truly fantastic to watch the ejecta leave the sun there helio viewer is lagging as of 5 a.m eastern time so we're using the sdo page and ISWA for the most part here. The Enlil spiral shows the CME will miss Earth by a good margin, which can also be seen on the Soho Lasco coronagraphs, main ejecta heading well behind Earth's orbital position. If anything, one of the simultaneous eruptions would have a better chance of being geoeffective, but they were very small. Speaking of those coronal holes, you can see they've got some force associated with them. It was just in the last 24 to 36 hours that the blue coronal fields really opened up and allowed those openings to become geo-effective. Then, we're looking to sunspots for more flare danger. The departing group up north has done well to develop the southern positive blue match, but they've been flaring less the last day. The incoming northern groups have a gamma class due to how spread the magnetics are, but the umbras are small, and we'd really like to see them mixing a lot more than that. Finally, the big guns down south don't really look like they should have fired an M flare. Perhaps it was a rapid decay event subsequent to the eruption or the fact that it's turning into face earth. So, the news has been talking about the Japan landslides a lot, but the Indian landslide woes are equally bad, not getting the press. A village lies buried beneath the mud and wood here. They are mostly finding bodies at this point. Survivors chances are dwindling. This would be funny if it weren't so damn true. We should all remember how NOAA and NASA were caught altering climate data and how the mainstream media barely touched the topic. Now we're hearing that such funny business occurred within the Australian BOM as well. In government we trust, eh? Let's look at the tropical development. Cristobal has been named in the Atlantic and the models now unanimously show a trek due north and a swing to the east thereafter. Meanwhile, the Pacific, we've still got storms, plural, with Major Hurricane Marie leading the way in terms of power. She won't make official landfall, but ask the Mexican coastlines and the shear zones if they can tell the difference. Meanwhile, another strong low is due north of that on the U.S.-Canada border, just east of where I'll be crossing today. It is driving a great deal of heat and moisture to the area from two different places. Combining the relative humidity with the precipitable water overlay gives you an idea of where the weather is heading tonight. Still mostly high pressure down under, but our one low just between nations actually has its trailing convergence set to make a little action in eastern Australia tonight. Nothing major. Meanwhile, that main low in Europe has moved inland and east while a new system creeps in towards Ireland, Scotland, and England. You can see the areas of note for each of those lows right now. As I mentioned, Mobile Observatory Project heads into Western Canada today. Be there about a week and then we're coming to Seattle. Got the rest of the world's storm zones and shots of our star to close. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time. 
4.35 a.m. Mountain Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.